Welcome back Egyptology lovers. So today I'm continuing the big project of my Book of the Dead of 37 plates. This is the chapter, this is plate 6 uh, of the Book of the Dead. So I'm going to discuss this one. I've done the already, already the other five on YouTube. So going forward from this one, this is uh, basically now the finally at the very head of the procession. So after Ani's judgment and uh, praising and brought forth into the afterlife, now he can basically show his funerary procession. So what you have here is three men bringing many of Ani's artifacts and things uh, with him to the afterlife, and they're usually set in front of the funeral like this, uh, like the, pretty much these objects over here. Uh, of course, the food offering that you see over here, bread, beer, wine, a lot of different uh, uh, items right over here as well. And this is where he'll be buried in this um, tomb-like area, which has a pyramid on top, which signifies the ancient pyramids of the Old Kingdom. And he is here mummified with um, a wax cone on his head. He has a mask that's put over him, so pretty much where you see the coffins of ancient Egypt all around the world, different museums, uh, the lotus flower. Here you have three priests that he can technically afford. Uh, this is a lector priest who's reading the ritual rites. Here you have two priests and panthers. One is holding incense, the other one is holding a setup um, tool which was used for opening of the mouth and an Anubis priest who is pretty much dis, uh, symbolizing mummifying the dead. Now this is all reenacts when Osiris, when Thoth opened the mouth of Osiris. So the same ritual is being reenacted here. Um, in the very back here you have the wailing women. These are the women of Ani. They are bare-breasted and they have tears and they beat their chests which is pretty customary for a mourning uh, procession. And one of the things that was also very interesting and maybe striking to many is that there is a priest over here and he's holding a freshly cut calf leg. Uh, and you can see above him here, you see a little calf and it's bleeding to its mother because its leg was ripped off and the mother is right over here. So you can see a missing leg. This is brought over in order to give offerings. So this could be a ritual that was done, chopping a leg off and bringing it over to the deceased. Uh, why this is done? is a good question. Uh, we have some texts that describe it to being done, but not as to why it's being done, but I'm sure the information will inevitably come out. All right, so that's pretty much it right here. And now looking at the majority, looking at a little bit what's happening here, this was actually reenacted in a sort of a passion scenario. This was done. We have proof of this, of uh, the Stella of the 12th dynasty of an official called, I believe, yes, Inghernofret. Now, what he did was uh, several sources, particularly his stella of the 12th dynasty, shows the passion play of Osiris was performed at Abydos. Uh, Abydos, that, that's the, uh, Abydos is the chief city of this god. And so now this may seem strange to us, but you know, underlying these lines, the process of identification of the deceased with various gods and with the myth of restoration of Osiris to those raised in Judeo-Christian Islamic traditions, you know, these identifications can be terribly presumptuous, virtually blasphemous to do that, until one realizes that the Egyptians assumed such divine roles, not because they believed they were divine, but in order that the mythical history would repeat itself for their benefit. So though this may seem blasphemous to us monotheists in our culture, but this was done to reenact, not to, for them to become personified as gods. So there you go. So that's generally the idea. All right, so that's for information about what's happening here in the procession. Uh, now, something about the text before we start. This is something called retrograde. Now, generally, because you have the text facing to the right, you would read from right to left, top to bottom. But retrograde is something that we see in many texts, and we don't really know why. We have a theory as to why it's being done. What it really means, retrograde, is simply that you're moving the text from left to right. So you're reading in from left to right, but you're reading the text from right to left. So you're reading from top to bottom on the left side and then continuing to each following uh, to each following column. Now that's very strange. We would normally read, for example, let's say if we started here, we would read from the right to the left, but we're moving rightward as we're reading from right to left, down, up, down, up like that. Now we don't really know, we can only assume, scholars have assumed basically that the procession was done because the procession is moving left to right, so the text is moving with the procession as we're reading from the standard right to left. 
So that could be the only reason. Also, and according to Egyptian sense of direction, the, the west was right. So we're reading westward. Uh, and that's an orientation of the columns, as you can see from left to right, the progressive uh, progression also of the vignette. So that could be the reason for retrograde. Now, it doesn't always appear from all books of the dead. It's very rare. Sometimes you see it, but not all the time. Most of the times you don't see it because it's a blunder for copyists. When copyists are writing down the text, they make a lot of mistakes because they're moving in the unconventional direction. So that's the thing. So here's how the text is going to be read. The section here is omitted because this section is actually in chapter in plate five. So I'm gonna read from plate five, but you won't see it, and it continues over to plate six. So we're gonna start right over here, right there, and then we're gonna proceed like that. We're gonna just keep going. So we're gonna go from left, and we're gonna work all our way down to the right. So there you go. So stay tuned for that. I'm gonna start reading the text right after this. If you're having a hard time seeing this, maybe use a tablet. Unfortunately, I can't make it any bigger. I have to cover the whole text so you see it all as one. And uh, stay tuned for that, and we'll start it soon. All right, welcome back, Egyptology lovers. So we're going to read now the text over here. Now, this section here you see is not part of the plate six. I pasted this together because in the previous plate, this was a continuation of plate six. So generally, the Egyptians, when they wrote the Book of the Dead, it was just one continuous scroll but I decided to add this here because it would make sense. So we're gonna start reading starting from here. O oh, you who come to draw the perfected souls in the house of the Osiris, you who have drawn the perfect soul of the Osiris Scribe Ani, vindicated or true of voice, with you. To the house of the Osiris, may he hear you. May he see, this continues here, see, like you see, May he stand like you stand. May he sit like you sit. See the word sit is here and there. Oh, you who give bread and beer to the perfected souls in the house of Osiris, you who give bread and beer at all seasons to the soul of the Osiris Ani, vindicated before all the gods in the finite gnome vindicated with you. O oh, you who open the path, you who open up the roads to the perfected souls in the house of Osiris, open thus you for him the road, open up thus you the roads for the soul of the Osiris scribe, counting the offerings to all the gods, Ani, with you. May he come in freely.
May he go out in peace in the house of Osiris without continues here without he being repelled without he being turned back May he come or go in favored. May he come out loved. May he be vindicated. May his commands be done in the house of Osiris. May he depart or go. May he depart. May he speak with you. May he be a spirit with you. May no fault be found in him. For as, this is not pronounced, this is a new sound it's to declare a new sentence. The balance, it is void of his misdoing. All right, this section here is for this big section right over there. So we'll start right there. Chapter for giving the mouth to the Osiris the Osiris, scribe, counting, offering of all the gods, Ani, vindicated for him in the God's domain. Word spoken. This is you again, it's not pronounced, and it continues up here, the terminative for a person speaking. I have arisen from the egg, which is in the secret land. This is you, we don't pronounce this. I have given, given, my mouth, my words, or spoken. Therefore, in the presence of the great God, Lord of the Duat, Duat. My hand shall not be thrust forward in the tribunal of all the gods. I am the Osiris. Lord of Rasu or Rasajau continues here, Rasu. I will share with the Osiris scribe Ani vindicated in this one who he is upon the days. For I have come to what my heart, my heart desires in the lake of fire, which quenches, continues here, quenches for me. Hail to you 
So hail to you, Lord of Light, who is foremost in the great in the great mansion, who is in charge of the twilight, twilight. I have come before you, you spiritualized, you pure. My arms are behind you. He was right there. Your portion of your food. May you give to me my mouth, my word, or speech. Therefore, or thus, may I lead my heart to its hour of fiery night. As for who knows this book upon the earth or in writing on the coffin, it is my word that he shall say when he goes forth or out into the day in any shape as he desires with or together with go into the place without being turned around Therefore, you as a new sentence is not spoken, he shall be given great in bread and beer. Therefore, upon this table of Osiris, therefore, he shall go out in peace to the field of reeds. To know this command of her who is in Basuris, Basuris or Jadu. The Egyptian name is Jadu. Ew, this is not spoken, this word, to again describe a new sentence. He shall be given barley and emmer. Therein, he shall be open before the sea, like he will be open, he will be open upon the earth. Furthermore, he shall do as he desires for like those nine gods who are in the duat duat a matter of a million times true Ew, a word not spoken to the Osiris scribe Ani. And there you go. That is the complete text of Going Forth by Day Once His Mouth Has Been Open. I hope you enjoyed this. Please stay tuned for Plate 7.